This video presentation is brought to you by the Pro Mathematics Academy. Welcome to part three of this video presentation brought to you in part by the Pro Mathematics Academy. Here we are continuing our series on trigonometry and we're now going to look at the Pythagorean law, right? And the first thing we want to note is that the purpose of the Pythagorean law is to express the relationship between the legs of a right trigon and the hypotenuse of the trigon, right? So that if, let's correct that, if one side is missing, right, the formula can be transposed for the missing side, okay? So let's look at our right trigon here. Right, and we have this side, which is called A, this side, which is B, right? And this side, which is C. Notice that C is the same as our hypotenuse, right? Because our hypotenuse is the largest side on a triangle, right? And whenever we think about the Pythagorean law, I always say that it's as easy as ABC, and that's simply because the relationship is expressed as A squared plus B squared equals C squared, right? So this is something that we have to remember. And if we're solving for C, then we take the square root of both sides, which leaves us with the square root of a square plus b square equals c. Sometimes we'll have to transpose for one of the legs. And here, if I know everyone is wondering, what is a leg? So the two perpendicular sides are referred to as the legs of the trigon. So here the legs are a and b, and c is the hypotenuse. Sometimes we're asked to transpose for the legs. So here b is equal to the square root of c squared minus a squared. This is something that we can recall whenever we're solving similar types of problems. a is equal to the square root of c squared minus b squared. Once we recall these formulas, we can use them straight just like that, all right? So let's jump right into some examples. And remember, here, the purpose of the Pythagorean law is to find the missing side. So we have to have two sides and one side missing, okay? So let's jump right into these examples. So our first example here gives us this trigon, and we see that the hypotenuse is missing, right? So here we can write down the relationship c squared is equal to 4 squared plus 3 squared, which implies that c squared is equal to 16 plus 9, which means that c squared is actually equal to 25. And now in order to find c, we'll say that c is equal to the square root of 25, which means c is equal to 5. Therefore, we've solved, and here we were given units, centimeters, so our answer has to be in centimeters, right? Notice that here I use the Pythagorean law as a process, right? Next, we look at example number 2. Right? Here we're solving for the missing side in this trigon. This time we are given um, the hypotenuse and one of the legs, okay? So this means we can write down our relationship as 13 squared is equal to x squared plus 5 squared, which now means that 169 is equal to x squared plus 25. This then means that 169 minus 25 is equal to x squared, which means that 144 is equal to x squared. Now taking the square root of both sides, we end up with the square root of 144 equals x, so this means that 12 cm is equal to x. Notice that here I use the Pythagorean law as a process, meaning that instead of taking the formula and plugging in all the terms one time, we laid out the entire process and transpose for x. Okay? Right. So let's take a look at our final example, right? Our final example asks us to solve for AB in the following trigon, right? So here I'm going to demonstrate how we can use the formula right, without doing the entire process, all right? 
So now, in the triangle, AB is equal to AM plus MB, okay? So we need to solve for AM separately and MB separately. Let's solve for M AM. So we can say that AM is equal to the square root of 33 squared minus 6 squared. Okay, thus that is equal to the square root of, I'll go to my calculator here, Right? And remember, we're solving for one of the legs, so I'm using the formula for one of the legs. I'm not transposing, I'm just using the terms given and plugging them into the formula that we wrote down up here. Okay? So once you conceptualize B as the leg that you're solving for, then A must be the other leg, and C is the hypotenuse. Okay? So here, this gives me 1089 minus 36, which means that we now have the square root of 1053. If I plug this in on my calculator, I end up with 32.45 centimeters approximately, okay? Notice that we still aren't finished with this question, we have to solve for MB, right? So MB, if I'm using my formula again, is equal to the square root of the hypotenuse squared minus the other leg squared. So here the hypotenuse in that triangle, right, over on this side, the hypotenuse here is 45, so we'll take 45 squared minus 6 squared. So going over to my calculator, 45 squared is equal to 2,025. So thus, we have the square root of 2,025 minus 36, which is equal to the square root of, let's erase that, 1,989, right, which is equal to taking the square root of that we have 44.598 approximately, right, centimeters. So now we can find AB, right, by adding these two answers together. So thus we end up with Seventy seven point zero four eight. Approximately. Okay, so this is how we use the Pythagorean law to solve for the missing side in a right angle triangle. Okay, so you can use it to solve for the hypotenuse or you can use it to solve for one of the legs. Okay using these three formulas, right? So this one is for the hypotenuse, and these two formulas are for the legs. That is it for this video. Please remember to hit the notification bell, like, share, and subscribe for future post notification.